Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week, and if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we'll be making a single strap top. Always love a good asymmetrical top. They go with most things, and I can't help but feel elegant and sophisticated whenever I'm dressed up or down, a wardrobe staple. Speaking of, if you're looking to make a few wardrobe staples of your own, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used a total of 115 grams of yarn, and that's 220 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 4mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your longest crochet session. Honestly, I feel like I've been in a four year long crochet session, but one without any interruptions, I'd have to say about eight hours. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small and you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 3 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 4 millimeter hook and start off by making a chain that starts one inch underneath the underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. So I'd like for mine to be full length. So I'm going to start by making a chain that's 13 inches or 33 centimeters and that's a chain 70 for me. Now that we have our chain we're all going to get started on our first row which is a half double crochet row. So let's all start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch that's our turning chain and now from here, we're all gonna yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're gonna bring our hook down. Into that chain, we're going to yarn over, pull through for three loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do that again. Yarn over, into that following chain, pull through, and pull through all three. Continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So we are back. We have made our way all the way back up with our half double crochets, leaving that last chain. And now all we're gonna do is an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over into that last chain with one half double crochet, and then into that same last chain with a second half double crochet. Now the row sequence for this piece is going to be a half double crochet row and then a back loop slip stitch row. So getting started on a row two or our back loop slip stitch row, we're all going to chain one and flip our work. We're all gonna start by finding that first available stitch from our previous row and insert our hook only into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then we're gonna yarn over and gently pull through both loops on our hook. That is our first slip stitch, let's do that again. Into that next stitch, insert into that back loop and gently pull through everything. And we're gonna continue with one back loop slip stitch after every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. Our back loop slip stitch row is all finished. Now let's get started on the following row, which is going to be another half double crochet row, just like our previous run, but now they're all gonna be worked within the back loops. So let's all chain two and flip our work. So all we're gonna do is yarn over, find that first stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through, pull through all three, and again, yarn over, into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through all three. And we're gonna continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last one so we can increase together just once more. All right, so we are back. We are nearly finished with our first three rows. We've made our way all the way up with our back loop half double crochets, leaving that last stitch, and we're gonna close off this third row with another increase of two back loop half double crochets. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop, 
pull through and insert with two back loop half double crochets. There's my first, and here is my second. Now from here, all we're gonna do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can stretch because this is gonna have some stretch to it from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm and I'll meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row. I am back and the first half of my underarm portion is finished. I have a total of four rows. My width is roughly one inch or two centimeters unstretched. Now we're going to do some more underarm rows but with some more increases along the top to get a really smooth curve that leads up to our shoulder. So since we did all beat along the bottom, what we're going to do is chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and leave the last one again, and then I'll meet you back to do our next increase together. We are back with our back loop half double crochet row, leaving that last stitch, and now we're going to do an increase of three back loop half double crochets. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop, insert with one, with a second and now with a third half double crochet all into that last stitch. And we are going to need to increase into our slip stitch row as well. So how we're all gonna do that is start by doing a chain two. That first chain is gonna count as a stitch and that second chain is gonna count as our turning chain and then we're gonna flip our work. So getting started on our slip stitch row, inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So we're gonna skip that first chain Underneath that second chain's back loop, insert with your first slip stitch, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So into that first actual stitch from our previous row's back loop with a slip stitch and continue with a back loop slip stitch into every stitch to reach the end of the row. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of three back loop half doubles, and then a back loop slip stitch row with an increase into there as well until we have an underarm portion that can now reach from mid underarm over to the front of our body, roughly where we want the straps to be. So I would suggest around where your bra strap or tank top strap would lay. And I'll meet you back right after an odd number row. So along the top so we can get started on the strap right after that. All right, so we are back. The entirety of our underarm portion is now all finished. I have a total of seven rows and my width is roughly an inch and a half or four centimeters unstretched. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the top, we're all going to make a chain that can reach all the way up to the top of our shoulder, but making sure that our tail end still stays roughly one inch underneath our underarm at mid underarm. So I've already measured mine out. I need roughly five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. So I made a chain of 25. Now from here, we're going to do the following row in our row sequence, which is going to be a slip stitch row. So from where we're at, we're all going to block off that last chain and chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Once we reach the body, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, since this is a shoulder portion, we aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases into any of these rows. So at the end of the slip stitch row, chain two, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. We're going to continue to repeat our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases just until we get a shoulder portion that we like. But I would suggest not to make this too wide because we are going to have an inside border as well. I will meet you guys back right after a slip stitch row. So along the bottom so we can get started on the body from there. All right, so we are back. My shoulder portion is now all finished. I now have a total of 10 rows. My width is now two inches or five centimeters unstretched. And now from here, we're gonna get started on the first half of the front panel, which is going to be the decrease portion. So all we're going to do from here is insert our stitch marker into any stitch from the top where we want our piece to start to curve. Also keeping in mind that we are going to have our top band as well. So I inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch from the top, that's roughly three inches or eight centimeters, but you guys can insert your stitch markers higher or lower depending on how much of your chest that you'd like to show. But mine is roughly at about mid chest. So from here, since we should all be along the bottom, what we're going to do is chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving three stitches right before our stitch marker. And then I'll meet you back. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way up and we are now three stitches right before our stitch marker and now we're gonna do a decrease of three half double crochets. So let's all yarn over. 
inserting your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last, pull through and into that last, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then once we have that, we're all going to yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and this row is now complete. Now we're going to get started on our falling row, and our slip stitch row is not going to have any increases or decreases, so chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of that row, chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches, and I'll meet you back once more to do another decrease together. All right, so we are back. We have finished up our back loop slip stitch row and our following half double crochet row, leaving the last three stitches. Now we're gonna do another decrease of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last, pull through, and then into that last, and pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after a back loop half double crochet row so we can do our middle row and the rest of our piece from there. All right, so I am back with the first half of my front panel. Now I have a total of 23 rows. My width is now five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. We all should have ended right after a back loop half double crochet row. And now all we're going to do is do back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows until we reach the other side of mid underarm. So we're all going to do our following row, which is a back loop slip stitch row, and that's going to count as our middle row. So chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. All right, so our middle row is all finished. What we're going to do from here, like I said, is back loop half double crochet rows and back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our piece, making sure that we're not including that middle row. So from here, since we should all be along the bottom, we're all going to chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of that row, chain one, flip our work, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you back once we have the entirety of our front panel all finished. We should all end right after a half double crochet row, but do not do a chain up of one and cut because we can just work straight into the back panel from there as well. All right, so I am back. I have just finished the entirety of my front panel. I have a total of 47 rows and my width is roughly nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're actually just going to work directly into the back panel, so we will not be doing a chain up of one and cut. Everyone's last row should have been a half double crochet row. Now we're going to do our following row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch seam, but that slip stitch row is not going to count as the first row for the back panel. That back loop slip stitch row is going to count as our seam. So at the end of our back loop half double crochet row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making sure that we insert a stitch marker into the top of that row, just so we know where our seam is. And then once when our seam row is finished, we are then going to basically mirror everything that we just did here on the other side. So I actually already have the first half of my back panel already finished. So just to show you what everything should be looking like, from this edge over to this stitch marker that I have right here is the entirety of my front panel. Then right after that, I did back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we had on this side for the second half of our front panel which should actually also be the same amount of rows as the first half of our front panel as well, but we're just mirroring this side first. So at the end of our seam row, chain two, flip our work, do a back loop half double crochet row, then a back loop slip stitch row, again with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows as the second half of our front panel, including our middle row. Now this is my middle row for the back panel over here. It should also be a slip stitch row, and I did insert a stitch marker into there as well. So once we have the first portion of our back panel all finished, we should all end after a slip stitch row. I'll meet you back so that we can start working on the increase portion of the back panel. So now that we have the first half of our back panel all finished up, everyone's last row should be a slip stitch row with a stitch marker into the top of that row because that is our middle row for the back panel. We should all end along the bottom. So from here, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then make our way all the way up leaving that last stitch so that we can do an increase of three together because we did a decrease of three on the other side. 
So I'm back. I've made my all the way back up with my back loop half double crochets, leaving that last stitch. And now we're going to do an increase of three. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop, insert with one, with two, and then into that same with three half double crochets. Now from here, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From there, we're going to continue to repeat those two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of three back loop half doubles, then a back loop slip stitch row with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the decrease portion that we did for the front panel. And then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the shoulder strap. All right, so we are back and the increase portion of our back panel is finished. Now I have a total of 85 rows. My width is now roughly 16 and a half inches or 42 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we all should have ended along the top right after back loop half double crochet row. Then all we're gonna do is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on the decrease portion of our front panel. So for those of you that have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch from the top. So from where we're at, I made a chain of 15. Then from here, we're going to do the same amount of shoulder rows that we did for the other side. So our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. Chain one, flip our work, one slip stitch into every chain, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Our following row is going to be a back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases as well. Like I said, continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of shoulder rows as the first shoulder portion that we did. And then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the underarm portion. We should all end right after a slip stitch row along the bottom. And one more quick tip, the amount of stitches that we have for this shoulder portion over here should be the same amount of stitches as our first shoulder portion. All right, so we are back. Our shoulder portion is all finished up. Now we are nearly finished with our piece. We just have our two underarm sections left to do. So just to let you guys know, I now have a total of 88 rows. My width is now 17 inches or 43 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to do the first underarm portion. So what we're all going to do is insert a stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made when we got started on the shoulder portion for the front panel. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain of 25. So from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 25th stitch. Then from here, since we should all be along the bottom, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches right before a stitch marker, and then we're gonna decrease together. So getting started on this first underarm portion, we should all have one, two, three stitches left. We're all going to yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last stitch, pull through, second to last, pull through and into that last, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then we're all gonna yarn over and pull through all five of those loops and our half double crochet row is finished. Our following row is gonna be another slip stitch row and we are gonna start that row off with a decrease as well. So chain one and flip your work. Now to do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches, what we're all going to do is find that first available stitch and insert into that back loop, pull through. Find that next stitch's back loop, and when we have those three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over and gently pull through all three of those loops. And from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And all we're going to do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row, that ends on a decrease of three back loop half double crochets, and then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two for the same amount of rows as our second underarm portion that we did for the front panel. Now it should be an odd number of rows for everyone. So for me, I did a total of three of these rows. So for me, I will be doing a total of three of these rows. I'll meet you back once we have that all finished up so we can finish up with our last underarm portion. All right, so we are back. The first half of our underarm portion is all finished. I now have a total of 18 inches or 46 centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna finish this off with our underarm portion. So the second underarm portion is going to have back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. And then it's going to be a decrease of two back loop half double crochets at the end of our half double crochet row. So since we all should have ended right after back loop half double crochet row, do a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. Then get started on our following half double crochet row. So chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches, and then I'll meet you back so we can do that decrease together as well. 
All right, so we are back. We have finished up our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then also made our way back up with our back loop half double crochets, leaving the last two stitches. Now we're all gonna do a decrease of two back loop half doubles. And just to do that together, we're all gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and a back loop half double crochet row with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets into the last two stitches. And we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first underarm portion that we did. It should be an even number for everyone. Now, once we have that, I will meet you back so then we can seam everything together. All right, so you're back. I've just finished up my second underarm portion and now the entirety of my piece is finished. I have a total of 95 rows. My width is now 19 inches or 45 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to seam the sides. So first things first, let's fold our work in half, making sure that all the ribbing is along the outside because we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. Then we're all going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now from here, all we're gonna do is yarn over and pull through everything. And we're all gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Next, we're gonna find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop. Pull through everything on our hook. And let's just do one more. Next stitch into the front, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back, into the back loop, and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, we're all gonna do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet back so we can do the top band. All right, so our entire piece is now all finished and seamed up. Now we're going to seam the shoulders and then we can do work on our band. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out for our shoulder seam because this is going to be a single crochet seam and when we wear it we're going to want this to be on the inside. Next we're all going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything and do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do is work in through both the front and the back panel at the same time putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row and then two single crochet into every side half double. So this is my first side right here. It should be a side slip stitch row for everyone. We're all gonna find that top loop within the front panel. Find the same top loop within the back panel and single crochet. Again, our following side row is a side half double crochet row. So I'm gonna find that top loop within the front, find the same top loop within the back and single crochet. And since this is a side half double, it's a little bit wider. We're gonna be doing another single crochet. So into that same top loop within the front same top loop within the back should be a little bit easier since it should be gathered and single crochet. And since I just have one more side row, find that top loop, insert into that top loop within the front panel, top loop within the back panel, and do one single crochet because it is a side slip stitch row. We're all going to continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. And when we don't, I'll meet you back right after we all do a chain up of one and cut. So then we can all get started on the top band. So our shoulder seam is all finished. Next, we're all going to do a single crochet row along the top of our piece. So let's all start by flipping our work right side out, meaning our shoulder seam is along the inside, and then we're gonna insert our hook into any one of the stitches that we have that's nearest to the shoulder seam. And we're all gonna start with one single crochet into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back just to show you how we're gonna work into our side rows. But it's basically gonna be the same way as the shoulder seam. One single crochet into every side slip, two single crochet into every side half double. So I've just put one single crochet into every stitch and I've reached my first side row. Now all we're gonna do is find our first side row right here, which should be a half double crochet for everyone. Find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there is one. And then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Now this is our following side row, which is a side slip stitch row. Find that top loop and insert into there with just one. Let's do the next set of rows together. Find your following side row, which is the side half double for everyone. Find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. There's one. Into the same top loop with a second. 
and this is my following side row, which has a side slip, find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the top is all finished. Now from here, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for the top band to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly an inch or two centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain six. So now that we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're all going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and remember to gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. Into that next chain, insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. And continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So all we're gonna do is start by finding that next available stitch into the base and insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it. Now let's work our way up to the following row, which we're gonna slip stitch into that following stitch into the base with another slip stitch and flip our work. None of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch. And from here, just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch Remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. Now at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. We are back, and our first one, two, three rows are finished. Now we're just gonna connect it into the base. So all we're gonna do is find the next available stitch into the base again, slip stitch into there, that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, and then into that following stitch, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work and then repeat. Continue repeating our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around and we don't have any more stitches left to work into. I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. We are back. We have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into so now let's seam it all together. And this is going to be the same outside loop slip stitch seam that we did for the sides. So let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel's front loop, and then into that next available stitch's back loop into the back panel, yarn over and pull through all three loops, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our top band, and now we're just going to clean up our armhole with a single crochet row. So making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, we're all gonna insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then all we're gonna do is put two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip, and then one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up and around. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So our single crochet row along our armhole is all finished, and now we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all on the next one. Bye.